Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Eli Katz. And today we're gonna talk about drama. Uh, what is drama? Okay, according to Miriam Webster, a state, situation, or series of events involving interesting or intense conflict of forces. That's the definition of drama. We'll get back to this definition later on to see what it means. But the thing is, why do I care about the definition of drama? Or why drama matters? The answer is that we are flooded by information. We have thousands of information sources, news, that pouring information to our direction, and our mind need to decide what to read. Of course, we can always shut down the computer. We decide just not to read the news. But there is a, a need that we want to meet, okay? that we want to uh, satisfy when we go and we consume news. And it's the same need that will motivate the, the inside internal algorithm that we use in order to decide which news we're going to choose to read. Okay? So how does our mind decide which news we want to read? Okay? What, what kind of information we want to consume? And the answer is cognitive patterns. Cognitive patterns, or the drama, okay, is comprised of different types of elements, okay, different type of elements like bad news, definitiveness, list, negation, and glamour, uh, which I will, of course, go into them uh, in a more detailed way. Um, but these patterns, okay, these patterns will uh, tell our brain, will tell our brain uh, what kind of information we're looking at. Let's see an example, okay? Um, if we're talking about bad news, this is the top, the top post from Huffington Post. Okay, you can see um, you can see that some of the records here are uh, are in black, some in white. Uh, they are sorted by shares. Okay, but the amount of people sharing this post. Why is it so important sharing versus like, for example? Sharing is a, more, um, is a more powerful way of engagement. When I do a share of something, it's not only that I liked it or disliked it. I want people to know that I read it. I want people to know that it's part of the information that I consume. It, in, in a sense, it defines who I am. So it's a, a, very, uh, a, important, uh, a, a very important sorry, uh, way of me to uh, engage the news that I read. Uh, and you can see that most of the records are in black, which means they are negative. Okay, they are, neg they are negative news. It comes from our needs. It comes from our tendency to be drawn to negative news. Okay, uh, it's, I will not venture into the psychology of why we are doing it. At least not too much. But there is a need that we have in seeing bad news. We sometimes go into YouTube and we see news, we see car crashes, you, we see failed compilations, and we laugh and we say, because inside we say, okay, this is bad, I'm good, I'm in a better position, this is fun, I'm gonna keep consuming it. That's one side of the need that we have here. And this is why people consume uh, bad news. You can also read it by in Wikipedia about the negativity bias, it, which also explains the tendency of us to always get attracted. In case of two different feeds with the same intensity, one is negative, one is positive, we will always be attracted to the negative. Okay, list, for example. Let's go to list. This is BuzzFeed uh, top uh, feeds. And here you can see that the list always dominates the, uh, the feeds. It can be 10 confessions, 19 mind-blowing things, 10 things you didn't know about. This is a, a, very, uh, a very reoccurring pattern that we can see all the time of giving a list. Five amazing, sexiest people in Hollywood today, or things like that. It starts with a number, and it gives you the details, and you have to come and see the list. So we are drawn to list as well. Now negation is a little bit more complicated. Okay, uh, there are several different ways to uh, express negation, but we use them in news all the time. Here's an example. Okay, 
everything you thought about something, and it's wrong, okay? <laughs> Five things you knew about, you thought that you knew about Brad Pitt, who happened to be wrong. A uh, myth that you thought uh, that you knew about food, and they happened to be wrong. Okay, this kind of uh, negation of patterns uh, occurs a lot in many different uh, uh, grammatical structures or lexical structures, but they all uh, create the same thing. They create a contradiction within themselves. Okay, so people are drawn to drama, okay? And it explains why people engage dramatic calls to action. Okay, we click more on things that are dramatic. We share it, we read it, and the question is, can we predict engagement by measuring the drama? Okay, if we say the drama will, will, will be uh, the motivator for the engagement, if I know, if I can put a number behind the drama, can I predict the engagement? We recently submitted a, a patent application named the Drama Meter, in which we created an algorithm that uh, measured the drama in news feeds. Um, I will not, I, unfortunately, I cannot uh, uh, show you the equation yet because it's not uh, published, but I will go over the uh, different components that we use in order to measure drama. Um, okay, so we started with the patterns, the cognitive patterns that we discussed before. Okay, like the 10 things and the question. Also, we have like men reunite with a life-saving dog. If you ask yourself why this pattern is here, and you see it's obviously grammatical incorrect. There's no, uh, there's no articles here, okay? It's grammatically correct, but it's one of the most frequent, uh, the most frequently used pattern in news. If you open CNN, for example, you open any other news feed, you will find that this is a very dominating pattern. So what we did, we collected a, a, a big amount of, a huge amount actually, of headers, okay? And we used the taggers in order to create patterns for each header, and then we uh, grouped them together in order to create, to see which patterns are really, really powerful and used more frequently uh, in use. Uh, we used these, the top patterns in the algorithm to present the most dramatic or engageable patterns. Uh, another important component of the drama meter is the definitiveness, okay? Look at the sentence here, the woman ate the cake. It's a very simple sentence, it's a very definite sentence. The information is very, very clear. Most of the time when we have a very simple sentence, that's the definitive, the definitive form of the information that we want to convey. But I can, I can say that the sentence in a different ways or add information, change the information, and I lose the definitiveness, okay? For example, if I use wildcard like someone, or if I use words like I think, or maybe, or models in verbs like should, these kind of things, mostly because of styling, but these kind of things within the text reduce the definitiveness of the information. And it's also reduce the dramatic in a sentence. When I want to measure drama, I want the sentence to be as definitive as possible. The dog did something. It's not maybe, it's not I think, it's not it should, it's something happened, period. Another example. This is a, a good example of drama. I love my wife, exclamation mark, which happens to be true. Um, but look at the other sentences. They also express my feelings to a woman. Okay, but I like this woman, so like is a little bit, a little bit uh, weaker than love. I think I love her, I have love, but I'm thinking, I'm not sure, okay? And the last one, I have strong feelings for Sarah, okay? And there's another thing here, the length of the sentence. The more words that we need in order to express the message that we want to convey, the less dramatic it's gonna be. This is why I will open the news and say, she found him in bed and chopped up his leg, whatever. <laughs> and I will not add the extra information. We did quick with four words and that's it. It has to be short. So the length and the words that I use eventually will create how much drama uh, I will have it. So definitiveness is the second element that we use. Now sentiment values. Every word, every word, um, 
or most of the words that we use have some kind of a sentiment a value to it. Now, sentiment value is both whether it's negative or positive, but also whether it's uh, the intensity that this word has, okay, to hit someone versus uh, to kill or to murder, uh, etc. Uh, this is a common list in uh, sentiment analysis. This list is actually built automatically. Uh, a cost, it's a corpus-based list that we create automatically from the corpuses that we test. Uh, we started by a manual, a very small manual list, and then using machine learning algorithm, we increased this list uh, into the size that it is today, and for us, it's uh, ready for uh, production, uh, which means that it includes uh, more than two million words, and for the purpose of news corpus, it's uh, well enough. Uh, examples. So you can see here, uh, you can see here that the words appear with uh, another element aside from the value itself, which is the object, verb, and subject. Um, the, the fact that it's there is because the function of a word in a sentence will change the semantic meaning. Uh, kills as a, as a subject or as an object is different from kill as a verb, which will be, in, in most cases, the verbs can have a, a stronger value than the nouns, okay, the objects. So uh, in the database, we create the distinguish between them. Not always there will be a difference, but sometimes there will be a difference in the values. Um, the last part of, uh, of the algorithm uh, is the popularity of the feeds that we are testing or we're using. Something that is uh, used a lot, something that is engaged a lot, uh, indicates that it has uh, a lot of dramatic essence in it. Uh, so we also incorporate within the algorithm, uh, we also incorporate a lot of uh, information that we retrieve from the news feeds like how popular it is, how many times it was clicked or shared, things like that. So we also incorporated it within uh, the drama meter. What I want to share with you uh, also is what are we going to do with the drama meter? Uh, the Access OCA obviously is not a research institute and we're not a, uh, we're not a university, we're a commercial company. So we use the drama meter in order to do something. Uh, the, purpose, the, drama, the purpose of the drama meter, the reason why we created it to begin with, is first of all because we wanted to predict engagement. What we did is we took um, history of the last two years of feeds from different news uh, sources, and we looked at, the t we, we sorted them by the likes and the shares and the engagement of users with these feeds. We also took these feeds and we uh, ran the drama meter on them to see if there is a correlation between, uh, between the engagement of the users and the actual score that the drama meter uh, resulted. And there was a, a very clear correlation between the two. Um, so we are in the process of building a, a prediction model uh, that can be used uh, in many stages of both in, in analyzing news sources, but also in creating the news. When you generate, if you're a company that generates the information yourself, you can use the drama meter in order to uh, estimate how well your, your uh, feed is formed. How, what, is the, 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 what is the probability that people will actually click on it? And maybe you need to change it based on that score. Thank you. <laughs>